Welcome to Central Church's online devotional ministry. These short devotions are intended to provide inspiration and hope to all people, including our friends, neighbors, and church members. We hope that you find them both meaningful and helpful as you search for spiritual food. It's our prayer that you discover new ways to serve Christ and be about His work in the world. Here's Pastor Bob. The season of Lent has begun. Lent is a time of preparation. Jesus, at the beginning of his ministry, after he was baptized, went out into the wilderness of Judea. The wilderness of Judea is a very rugged, even dangerous area. Jesus is there for 40 days and 40 nights, preparing for his ministry. He does not eat during this period of time, and one can imagine that he would be very hungry. In the Gospel of Luke, we read these words. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days. At the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world and said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. Jesus is in the wilderness and the devil comes to him with three temptations. The first temptation is the temptation of the flesh. Jesus is hungry. The devil picks up a stone. There were many stones in the wilderness and many of them resembled loaves of bread. Turn this stone into bread, says the tempter. The response of Jesus is quick and it is from the scripture. Man does not live on bread alone. In Luke's Gospel, the temptations are reversed from the order in Matthew and Mark. The second temptation in Luke is spiritual temptation. Jesus is taken to the pinnacle, to the highest point of the temple, and the devil says to him, throw yourself down, for legions of angels will bear you up. Here is the temptation to a spectacle, to a demonstration, to the shortcut. Declare yourself to be the Son of God before all the throngs that are worshiping in the temple. It is a temptation to pride. You are the Son of God. If you are the Son of God, the tempter says in two of the temptations, nothing can get in your way. And Jesus, again relying on the word of God, sends him away immediately. He says, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. The opposite of uh, pride is despair. That's another form of of spiritual temptation, Uh, the temptation to hopelessness and joylessness. And so temptation of the spirit can come to us in a variety of ways. The third temptation is overt. The devil comes to him and uh, says to him, here are all the kingdoms of the world from up on a high mountain with a vast horizon. Here they are, and they all have been given to me. The devil falsely asserts that he has authority over this world. 
All this has been given to me, and I will give it to you, if you will fall down and worship me. Here is the temptation to power. It is overt. And the temptation is that Jesus will defect from God, that he will rebel against the Lord and join the tempter in his ruination of the world. Temptation is something that comes to all human beings. In the Greek Orthodox spiritual book, the Philokalia, we find in the index uh, given to us uh, some examples of what has been called the progression of temptation, but really the regression of temptation. For as we give in to temptation, we do not make progress, we regress away from the way of God. We see that Jesus avoids all of these except the first temptation by relying on the Word of God, by quoting the Word of God, and by sending the devil away. That is the best thing, to rely on God's Word when temptation comes. But uh, in this um, in this Philokalia, we find that the first temptation is provocation. It's something outside of our control, something that we see, something that we think, something that we experience. Uh, for me, as someone who likes chocolate very much, and more than I should with somebody who has diabetes, the provocation for me might be seeing a piece of chocolate cake, perhaps walking by a bakery, and there I see a chocolate cake in the window. That's provocation. That's not my fault. I'm walking down the street, and there happens to be a cake in the window. If I keep on walking, I'm okay. But then the temptation can cause us to regress. And the next phase is disturbance. The temptation begins to get our attention. And perhaps I don't keep walking, but I stop, I turn around, and I go back and I look a little more at that piece of cake. The third part of the regression of temptation is coupling. That's when you begin to engage the temptation. And so walking on the street, standing there on the sidewalk, I begin to think to myself, I can go in and I can buy that piece of cake. I become engaged with it. The fourth stage is ascent. I think, well, I'm going to act on this. And so I start to walk toward the door. And so my regression, as far as the temptation is concerned, is getting worse and worse. And finally, what the spiritual writers call prepossession, a plan, I'm going in and I'm going to buy that piece of cake. And finally, passion, yielding to the temptation. I go in and I buy the cake and maybe I buy two pieces instead of one or maybe even three. You know, one or two eat there at the little table they have and a couple to take home. Jesus rebuffs the tempter by sending him away. He relies on the word of God. But we read also that the tempter is waiting until the opportune time to approach Jesus again. The word in Greek is kairos, the right moment. Jesus will be approached again, perhaps in the Garden of Gethsemane. And when we are successful in avoiding temptation, we should not be filled with pride and pat ourselves on the back, but we should be aware that the right time will come when temptation will come to us again. During the season of Lent, uh, we admit that often we have failed when it comes to temptation. Let us turn to the Lord and rely upon the Lord and upon His Word to resist those things that separate us from Him. Let us pray. Our Lord and God, as we go through this season of Lent, may we indeed make progress in the way that we resist temptation, in the way that we move ourselves closer to you and more ready to receive your grace and to embrace your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We invite you to visit our church website at cpcteranum.org to learn more about our ministries. You can also visit us on Facebook at Central Presbyterian Church Trenum. Please join us as we renew lives, inspire hope, and serve others. God bless you.